We come to the earth which, well, grew to get here, the way it is now. Here is our world, our planet Earth, floating in space. We will be going backward in time, imperfectly, but done in a very disciplined manner. Please notice there is no subduction, no rotation of tectonic plates, no twisting, no form fitting, no altering shapes or sizes. It would be impossible, impossible for these continental plates to fit together perfectly without this being true, and yet the upper tectonic plates fit together perfectly on a much smaller planet. Yes, there's been some erosion, landslides, blah, blah, but overall this activity is insignificant. There is a kind of conspiracy of silence among certain scientists. They know, but are not telling you, that the upper tectonic plates of Earth also join in the Pacific, not partially, they join totally. You are asked to believe that the continents swim or drift about willy-nilly, bumping and crashing as if they were on a grease skillet. This is not true. The simple truth is apparently too upsetting to too many apple carts. We're now going forward in time to show how the actual growth of the Earth took place. Imperfect as the details, but the overall is nailed. Antarctica as you see, has become subtropical. Africa on a smaller globe move way downward under the globe. In fact, for hundreds of millions of years, the bottom of Africa was the South Pole. South America's tail goes under and wraps around the bottom of Africa. Then, incredibly, it joins coasts with Antarctica. 65 million years ago and more, these continents were joined and marsupials like the duckbill platypus roamed from Australia, Antarctica, and across southern South America and up into Africa, the platypus. Dinosaurs roamed all over this world on the upper tectonic plate because there were no oceans, just shallow seas. Here today, Antarctica is frozen over and Australia and its surrounding islands are the remaining home of marsupials. Do you see how broadly the Pacific is opening compared to the Atlantic? This is exactly why the knee-jerk Pangaea theory exists. The Pacific spread is too difficult to easily visualize because it's so big. The Atlantic spread is so obvious that a child would recognize it, but they are the same. Check this map out. The Navy and others took core samples to find the ages of the sea bottom. Lo and behold, no part of the undersea was found to be much older than 70 million years old. Does that shock you? It should. It shocked the scientists. Where do they get ancient fish fossils from? From the land, like in Mississippi and Utah and France and China. Most of the undersea wasn't there 70 or 80 million years ago. The measurements of the core samples give the age of the sea floor newest 10 million or so is red as we go back in time we go backward in our rainbow orange yellow green blue okay so we bury the new sea floor back to the fault lines as dictated by color or age 10 million years back these are the ages of the sea floor as measured by science and they're generally true earth grew 20 million I'm not making this information up. This map comes from the scientific community. 30 million. You can find the same map in many places on the internet. It's common knowledge. 40. The ocean bottom is from one year to 180 million years old. 50. 70 percent of it is no older than 60 million years old. 60. The upper plate, the continents, are as old as two billion years old and more. Seventy. Ten to twenty times as old as the undersea plates. The undersea plate is new and spreading at the rifts. 
Why does the scientific community desperately cling to and promote the idea that the ocean bottom is sliding under the continents and into a magma which is twice as dense as solid granite? A totally unsupportable and scientifically unsound idea? They have to. Or else they'd have to observe and admit that the Earth is growing. And that, viewers, is a very big deal. That would change everything in science, from the smallest particle to the whole universe. 100 years of scientific theory out the window. That's a lot to give up. It's important to remember that science and the universe should and must be easier to understand as we go back in the universe's evolution. This is an undersea map. As a kind of test for ourselves, we deemed it important to show that not only the upper plate had to fit properly together, but the undersea had to spread in a logical, reasonable pattern that we could see and understand as rational humans. Do you see those lines in the undersea which, beyond information, show direction? The direction of movement apart and away from the rifts. In fact, it's like a movement diagram, isn't it? Ah, we're moving now. Let me point out that the newer undersea near the rifts is smoother and more regular than the older land further away from the rifts. Here in the Atlantic, the rift goes right up the middle. Half of the Earth's growth has happened since the extinction of dinosaurs. This means that the Earth is accelerating in its growth. In the last 65 million years, Earth nearly doubled in size. The last redoubling took 600 million years, at least. We're continuing all the indicated undersea directions, like following a blueprint. The Earth guides us. And now the land masses will come together. Perfectly. As we now go forward in time from 185 million years ago, please notice there is no subduction. No raising and lowering of land masses. There can't be. It's hell in the form of magma down there. Local raising and lowering, yes. But not on a massive basis. It can't happen. There's no turning, rotating of land masses. The land masses sit in their individual plates and don't move. The rifts open, that's all. For examination, I'm going to run a few vignettes of each area of Earth that you have a right to be curious about. The North Pole. Man, I love this map so much. There was a piece in the recent National Geo. It shows that the trees in Asia and North America were exactly the same trees. Well, this is why. The land was together when the trees evolved. the South Pole. The oceans have absolutely nothing to do with tectonic spreading, except that they cool the thickening mantle. Tectonic spreading, even according to the most conservative scientists, has created two-thirds of the Earth's surface in the last 200 million years. And therefore, the same, the same must be true on all planets, including Mars. Must. And we can see the younger spreads on Mars just as on Earth. But there is, just as clearly, no subduction on Mars. It can't be both ways. You either have spreading and subduction, or you have only spreading, and you must have spreading. Or, you can continue to ignore the facts and say, as the ancients said, that the Earth is unique and singular in the universe, and that we are the center, and the universe 
rotates around the Earth. 